Hello there friends and welcome. Today's build will be a bit different. We are going with a Shield Basher dual builder character that can attack with both his main weapon and also use his shield for more attacks at the same time. So you are bashing at the enemy with your shield, using it both for defense and offense. If you are looking for a different type of dual builder character, this build can certainly be very fun. We have very high attack bonus as a Demon Slayer Ranger and this is actually missing the permanent plus 10 bonus to both attack rolls and also damage that we get against all of the demon enemies in the game, no matter what type they are. Even our shield gets a lot of damage for around 61 to 76, still missing some bonuses too that only show during combat. And here's a very interesting mechanic, your shield can actually become the weapon with the highest enchantment in the entire game. Notice that we have plus 5 from our shield enhancement, and then we add an extra plus 5 from shield master, so our shield is treated as if it was a plus 10 weapon. So it's almost like hitting your enemy with a giant shield, while also cleaving them apart with your very powerful scimitar. And for this shield basher, we are going with the Ranger Demon Slayer. Ranger has always been a very solid class, and Demon Slayer is by far the best one in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. There are certainly other classes you can use for shield bashing characters, but I do think the Demon Slayer is the best of them all. First, your favorite enemy bonus applies to all of the demons in the game. So you don't have to bother with the annoyance of demons of magic, slaughter and strength. It doesn't matter, you always have full demon favorite enemy bonuses. Starting at plus 2 at level 1 and eventually becoming up to plus 10 at level 20. This does apply to both your attack and damage rolls so can be very powerful and it even applies to your pet rolls as well. Our favorite enemy bonus will actually apply to both our weapons too the scimitar and shield, so it's just perfect overall. Second, a Demon Slayer Ranger can get all of the two weapon fightings for free as bonus Ranger feats. And the best part is we can completely ignore our dexterity and just focus on strength instead, because when we get them through the Ranger feats, we ignore the prerequisites, so no need for dexterity at all. And you can even use some of these feats for the very powerful shield bashing feats too, and there are some specific ones. Of course, you also get a very powerful pet as soon as level 4. I don't think it needs any saying, if you watch some of my videos then you already know pets are absolutely overpowered in Pathfinder. Almost like having an entire full extra party slot for free. Ranger even gains some other nice features as well, such as favor terrain, evasion and of course the query ability for even more bonus to damage and attacks. Lastly, Rangers also get spellcasting of level 1 to level 4 divine spells with a spell list pretty similar to Druid with some unique spells too. Most importantly, you do gain a lot of very powerful self buffs at level 1, 2 and level 3 to highly increase your damage and also attack bonus. One example is the Lead Blade spell, a very rare spell that actually increases the size weapon damage of both your main weapons, so your scimitar and also your shield, which is why our heavy shield here has 3d6 damage. Same for our scimitar. And for this build, we are going with Trickster. <laughs> yes, I know, another Trickster build. I can't really say much other than the fact Trickster is one of the best mythic paths, if not the best, at least in my opinion, for characters that cannot merge with Lich or Angel. So anyone that's not a full spellcaster. Demon certainly has its uses as well for a very powerful character, but Demon is limited by their rage. As a Trickster, your special Trickster critical feats are a permanent boost to your character, that you can even apply to your party members as well, pets included. Also, shield bashers gain a very special feat called bashing finish. Whenever you score a critical hit with a melee weapon, which can be your shield bash as well, you'll get to make a free shield attack against the same target as a free action. There's no words to describe how extremely powerful this can be. You can get a massive amount of free attacks because there is no limit to this spell round whatsoever. And with a trickster character in particular, you can even eventually gain infinite attacks per enemy. So your attacks will loop over each other for an infinite number of shield bashes, that's how crazy it can be with a trickster. Until the enemy is left dead. After all, there's no point in attacking a dead enemy. And because this ability is directly related to your critical hits, it is in our best interest to have very high critical range which is another reason for going with tricksters, who can achieve the ultimate critical range in the game. My scimitar here, for example, has 11 to 20, which is actually 10 to 20 because of the Knowledge World 2 trick for 50% critical chance. It doesn't get any better than that. Not to mention, of course, the ultimate trickster spell, Trick Fate, 
which turns every single one of your attacks into critical hits. And with this, you can just loop your shield bashes into infinity. That's not an exaggeration at all. So honestly, while for some of my other builds you might make a case for other mythic paths like Demon and Azata, for this build I really recommend you go with Trickster. The synergy between shield bashing and critical hits is immense. You don't want to miss out on that. Now as far as race, as usual I really like going with human, and this does actually matter a lot for this build in particular. Because we are actually quite feet starved, so the extra feet at level 1 will make a big difference. Even though we gain a lot of free feats as a ranger, we have to invest not only in the 3 draw building feats, but also some of the shield bashing feats. Besides that, some general powerful feats like improved critical and the teamwork feats, and lastly, the special trickster critical feats. As for backgrounds, you have two different choices that are going to differ, well, based on what main weapon you'll be wielding. You can go with a rapier, in which case you should pick one of the noble backgrounds. Rapiers are good in that they have high critical range, and in the late game, at chapter 5, you can find a very special shield that whenever you bash at the enemy with it, it will turn the enemy vulnerable to piercing damage to increase your rapier damage. The only downside is that this is pretty late game only. I would rather go with scimitars. So either Wanderer and then Nomad, or Regional and Shackles Corsair. Nomad can actually give a little bit of extra hit points to your pet. Not that much in the long run, but it can help in the early game. And I do believe there are way more powerful scimitars in the games than rapiers, with way better progression too. As far as your ability points, the nice thing about range is that we can completely ignore our dexterity, so we can fully focus into strength. For 19 strength, a character creation, to increase both our attack bonus and damage for our scimitar and shield, just a little bit of dexterity 12 is enough, to get more attacks of opportunity going, 14 constitution for a decent amount of hit points, 12 intelligence because this build will gain the trickster wizard spell book later on, the rest you can just increase to headbands, and also 13 wisdom. Wisdom is our main spellcasting attribute as a ranger. You don't need any more, because you can just increase the rest once again to headbands. The reason we start with an odd score, 13 instead of 12 or 14, is because tricksters, through the aid of the Arcana 1 mythic trick, can actually increase the enhancement bonus of the headbands and bells you find by a plus one. So a headband of plus two wisdom, for example, when found by our trickster with this trick, will become plus three, which can later turn this score into an even amount. But of course, you can also dump charisma to further increase one of your other ability points. As far as skill allocation, well, first athletics, because you have very high strength. If you picked Shackles Corsair, you can also go with mobility, but it's not going to matter that much because we don't have high dexterity. Perception to lore nature, because we are a ranger. And the rest are really up to you. You can, for example, pick world, if you want to cook for your party. I'll also go with Knowledge Arcana, as Demon Slayers do gain a bonus to it. And lastly, anything you want. Law Religion can be good because there is a certain scimitar in Chapter 4 that has great synergy with this, so let's pick it here. As far as your level 1 Shield Basher feats, well, the first should certainly be Shield Bash. You can only attack with your shield when dual wielding if you actually have this feat, so it's a must. For a second feat, go with Power Attack. I don't recommend you actually use this in the early game, because of the penalty to attack rolls, but eventually you will be able to overcome that and this can add quite a lot of extra damage both to your scimitar and also your shield attacks for around plus 18 at maximum level. For deity, go with any that falls under the trickster alignment, so any deity that lets you be chaotic. You can go with Kaden, Desna, Gorum for example, and I recommend you pick chaotic good. For level 2 we can already pick our first combat style feat, which of course is going to weapon and shield, and then two weapon fighting to reduce the attack bonus penalty with our shield in the offhand. This is perfect because it's just in time for the first real dungeon of the game, the maze. For level 3, go with combat reflexes, to get started on our teamwork feats. And as a shield basher we get so many free attacks eventually, that we also drown the enemies in attacks of opportunity. So it is in your best interest to get a lot of them. For your first favorite terrain choice, go with urban, after all most of chapter 1 will take place in the city of Canabris, and later you also have the Siege of Dresden at chapter 2. For level 4, increase your strength, which is also what you're going to increase on all of the other levels. This is also when you get to pick either the Ranger Spawn or the Animal Companion. If you've watched my videos and you know I strongly recommend you go with a pet, pets are simply amazing, and the one I really like the best is Dog. Not just because I really like dogs, 
but also because they are very powerful in Wrath of the Righteous. For level 5, go with Boom Companion, because Rangers, when they get their pet, they scale at your Ranger level minus 3, I believe. With this feat, we can make them fully scale to our level. For level 6, in your second combat style feat, Weapon and Shield, and improve it to Weapon Fighting. So now we have an extra attack with our shield. For level 7, go with Outflank as usual, to highly increase not only your attack bonus, but also your attacks of opportunity. For level 8, pick Favor Terrain and then Underground. There's a lot of tough underground areas in the game, and this will just be in time for that. For level 9, the choice is simple, improve at Critical, and then Scimitar or Rapier if you chose to go with it. Now the reason I'm picking it into Scimitar and not the Shield Bashing is because Shields have very low critical range, they just critical on a 20 by default, eventually with all of the trickster feats that will become 15 to 20 which is respectable, but on the other hand, scimitars can gain 10 to 20 critical range of a trickster so half your attacks will be critical hits. And as I mentioned before, it is in your best interest to increase your critical range as high as you can so you can benefit from a very powerful shield bashing feat that I will soon show you just at level 10. So at level 10 for our combat style feat is when you are finally getting the bashing finish feat and this feat alone is what makes shield bashing so powerful, if not overpowered even, with the aid of the trickster abilities and spells. For level 11, pick the shield master feat not only to increase your attack rolls of your shield by removing any penalty whatsoever, but also adding your shield enhancement bonus to damage and attack rolls. Very powerful. Now as usual for any trickster build, remember to get perception rank 1 and 2 mythic tricks at mythic level 4 before starting on level 13 progression. So for level 13, the first trickster critical feat, improve it, improve it critical scimitar. You can go with shields for criticals, but I do prefer scimitars. And of course, favor terrain abyss. At this point, we are pretty close to chapter 4, which does take place in the abyss for its entirety. For our level 14 bonus feat, greater to weapon fighting. So now we have 3 whole attacks with our shield. Besides all of the free attacks we are getting as attacks of opportunity, and also from bashing finish. For level 15, the second trickster feat. As for level 17, the last of the trickster critical feats. Improved, 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 critical, improved scimitar. For your last favorite terrain choice at level 18, a viewer has just notified me that desert can be a pretty good choice because the area outside of threshold, one of the most dangerous areas in the late game, is considered a desert. As for your last bonus feat as a ranger, it can really be anything. All of these feats here don't matter that much, at least not at this point in the game. Dodge and should focus will increase your armor class by 1, but you know, by this point you either have reach through size enhancing spells or can just ride your dog to completely ignore your armor class. So I'll be going with toughness because at the end more hit points are always good, even if you already have last stand. But you can also pick a skill focus of choice. As for your level 19 feat, you can either pick complete or normal spell, which I do believe is the best feat for this level because we already have the wizard spell book by now. But you can also go with something like Improved Critical and then Heavy Shield Bash, which doesn't matter because at this point we already have critical hits on demand through the aid of the Trick Fate spell, and even something like Seize the Moment. The reason I didn't pick it for this build as, as opposed to my other melee builds is, well, we are really fit starves, so I didn't really find space for it. Just Outflank and all of the free attacks you'll get from Bashing Finish are more than enough. So for level 19, I'll be going with completely normal spell. As for level 20, just your last increasing strength. Your capstone ability Master Hunter is really disappointing. The reason we keep progression at level 20 is because we also get our last favorite enemy bonus by now. Alright, now let's talk about mythic progression for our Shield Basher Demon Slayer. For your first ascension ability, I would go with Close to the Abyss, because this is a melee build that will fight at close range. And this means an extra gore attack for us, pretty much an extra attack per round. If this attack criticals, we'll get a free shield attack later on. And because we have very high strength, our damage with it will also be pretty good. For your level 1 mythic ability, as usual, ever ready. This is especially useful for a trickster character, because of all of the free attacks you'll be getting. Never mind when you get the bashing finish ability. For mythic rank 2, go with mythic 2 weapon fighting, to further reduce the penalties when fighting with 2 weapons. For Mythic Rank 3, I like going with Last Stand, just to provide the ultimate survivability to your character, after all it is a game over if your main character dies, but if you don't care for it, at around Mythic level 3, so that's level 10 or so, you can already ride your dog to completely ignore your character's armor class. 
so chances are you won't be getting hit in melee or ranged combat, but I still think this is pretty useful as a failsafe. If you don't care for it, you can go with Mythic Charge for more damage, or Mythical Beast to increase the power of your pet. Even something like Unrelenting Assault, which is a lot better earlier than later, to increase the damage of both your Scimitar and Shield attacks. For your first Trickster trick, as usual, I already have a guide explaining everything you need to know about the Trickster Mythic Path linked to the side here, so for this I'll keep it short. Go with Arcana 1. For Mythic level 4, the choice is simple. Mythic Improved Critical and then Scimitar. You can of course go with Heavy Shield Bash and focus on Shield Criticals, but I don't find it nowhere near as useful. And as usual, your Mythic Tricks at level 4 are very important. Perception rank 1 and also Perception rank 2 to open the Trickster Critical Feeds and this is when you should resume your normal build progression from level 13 onwards. For Mythic level 5, you can pick either Mythic Charge for higher damage, especially if you have, let's say, a Scald, which can provide your entire party with the Pounce ability for massive extra damage on all of your attacks, even better if you are dual building, or also Mythical Beast as a permanent boost to your pet's physical scores. Both are rather good choices. I'll go with Mythic Charge for now. For well, another trick, Athletics 1 rank. For Mythic level 6, go with Mythic Power Attack. By this level we can already overcome the penalty to attack bonus just fine, and this will highly increase your power attack damage even when dual wielding. As for your two tricks at level 6, use Magic Device rank 1, and then rank 2 so we can later qualify for the Wizard Spellbook. For Mythic level 7, I like going with Elemental Barrage. The reason is simple, at this level we get the Wizard Spellbook, and we have enough spells to give us elemental damage, so we can easily proc Elemental Barrage on our attacks. For example, Genie Kind, Firebrand, and also the Acid Mole Ranger spell, plus the Dragon Familiar Jarsigax. For another trick, Knowledge World 1, and then use Magic Device Rank 3 for the Wizard Spellbook. Your Mythic Feet at level 8 can really be anything you want, I'll be going with Flawless Attacks myself, because we are a dual wielding build, but it not, it's not going to make that much of a difference at this point. You can also pick another mythic ability through extra mythic ability if you prefer. For another trick, mobility rank 1, just to increase our movement speed, it doesn't really matter. And of course, knowledge world 2, for even higher critical range. As for mythic level 9, mythical beast. But as I said before, you can also pick this earlier if you prefer to empower your pet. For another trick, the ones left don't really matter that much. I'll just go with Lore Nature rank 1, just so we can get a random food bonus when resting. And also, be sure to pick Athletics rank 2 to empower your saving throws, because we do have very high Athletics. And if you were to ask me what you pick at Mythic level 10, well, you can use your Mythic feat for any Mythic ability you want. As for another greater Mythic trick, you can go with World 3, and then respect your party members so they have access to any feat in the game as soon as the early levels. Or also Athletics rank 3, so you can increase your base attack bonus to 25, way above just 20, which is something usually only Legends get access to. Alright, so let's talk now about gear for our shield bashing Demon Slayer. I've said this many times, but Valexa's magnifying amulet is the best amulet that you can find in the game for an extra boost to your strength, which can get pretty high at 48. As far as armors, well, in the early game, as a ranger you can go with chain shirts, especially mithro chain shirts, but during the late game, after you get access to the wizard spellbook, you want to go with Aramaki, armor won't really matter for you. Also, your wizard spells from Trickster will have arcane spell failure, so you'll have to go with Aramaki's or unarmored. Do remember that your shields also have arcane spell failure, 15 here with a heavy shield. But because all of our wizard spells are just for buffing, you can simply just well unequip your shield, buff your character to the max, and then use your shield again. For the belt slot, belts that increase both your strength and also constitution. For the glove slots, Fences Gift are the best because they will empower both your scimitar and also your shield attacks. But if you want more armor class and saving throws, you can go with the embroidered gloves. For boosts as usual, Warnock Sacrifice are the best in slot. But if you don't care for the extra bonus to dexterity and haste, you can always go with the boots of Stampede for higher charging. For headbands, in the early game headbands that increase your wisdom, to empower our ranger spellcasting, and later on headbands of mental perfection, that is, ones that increase both your wisdom and intelligence, to fully benefit from your wizard spellbook. For the goggle slot, the goggles of piercing gaze, as usual, for the extra insight bonus against outsiders. I know a lot of the gear selection tends to be the same for my melee builds, be they two-handed or dual wielders, but you know, there's not much you can do about that. The main difference is always when it comes to the weapon, and also the quick slots. 
cloaks of resistance as well with the highest bonus for a neat increase to your saving throws. As far as rings, your ring slot don't matter that much for your shield basher character. So I like going with Martyr's Testament to give you immunity to mind affecting in higher will saving throws. And also the Ring of Summoning, a very special storyteller relic that can enhance all of your party members attacks and damage against demon enemies. For once I'm not going with the Ring of Guiding Star because this character in particular won't have that high initiative. As for braces, for any dual wielding character, the braces of heavy hand because of the neat boost to your offhand damage, in this case our shield. Now let's talk about our weapon slots. So for this build I went with scimitars for their very high critical range and also the powerful properties. The best one is the down flowers kiss and I already have a guide with all of the best scimitars in the game including their full progression that you can check linked to the side here. As for shields, for your ultimate shields I'd say you have two choices for shield bashing. The shield of holy thorn is actually my favorite. It is a spiked shield so deals extra damage and it's also a holy shield for a very useful 2d6 points of damage against all evil creatures, very powerful. You can find this shield by buying it from the Skeletal Merchant starting from chapter 3. Now if you went with Rapiers, then the Hole Maker shield is probably your best choice. The only downside is that you can only get this shield very late game by buying it from one of the Hell Knight Merchants in the Hell Knight campsite, the same area you have to go for Regus quests. Only at chapter 5 however, this shield is very special because well, it's also a spiked shield, so great for damage, but whenever you confirm a critical hit with your shield attack, the enemy will take not only a minus 2 penalty to their attack rolls, which doesn't matter that much, but most importantly become vulnerable to piercing damage for 2 rounds, and this is without a save, which is what makes it so powerful. Vulnerable enemies take 50% more damage, so if you went with a rapier, that's 50% more damage added to all of your rapier attacks. The problem, like I said, is that this is very late, and by the point you get it, well, you already have looping shield attacks or a massive number of attacks per round anyways because of bashing finish and all of your attack of opportunity feats. For the quick slots, if you went with use magic device, then you certainly want a slot with the wand of heal because we do get infinite uses of this as a trickster. The greater quicken meta magic rod as usual to quicken some of your buffs, especially trick fate if you don't want to cast it out of battle. The Dragon Familiar jars the gags for more elemental damage, for even higher chances of proccing elemental barrage multiple times per attack. And lastly, just the Signet of House Vespertilio to increase your skill of choice. Alright, now as far as spell allocation for your Ranger Shield Basher, remember I already have a guide covering all of the best Divine spells and also Arcane spells for your Wizard Spell Book too, linked to the side here and down below in the video description. But to keep it simple, both Acid Maw and Lead Blade spells are amazing for your Ranger. Lead Blades will increase the damage of both your Shield and also Scimitar, while Acid Maw will give your pet Acid damage. However, your Ranger character will be the one treated as the source of the Acid damage, so you can actually combine this with another element of choice to proc Elemental Barrage just fine, so long as your pet attacks the enemy of course. Sense Vitals is another amazing spell to add sneak attack to your damage, both Scimitar and Shield. Instant Enemy, on the other hand, can let you apply your full favored enemy bonus against all sorts of other non-demonic enemies in the game. And it is also cast as a swift action, so you can actually cast this and full attack all in the same round during battle. A perfect spell for any ranger that fights in melee, as the range is somewhat short. And for level 4, go with the Aspect of the Wolf spell to give your character a free trip attack. It only costs a swift action, so you cannot actually use this and instant enemy, at least not in the same round, because you are limited to just a single swift action. Even if you aren't built for trip attacks, because of your high strength, you can eventually get the enemy knocked down, after all it's just a swift action, basically for free. For wizard spells, I'd say, well besides the defensive buffs, the most important ones are genie kind, to add another source of elemental damage. Firebrand for the same reason, in this case fire. With Genikind you can actually choose which element to add. I recommend you go with something like code, so you have code through Genikind, fire through firebrand, and also acid through acid mod for triple elements. And then when you combine it with the dragon familiar Jarsigax, well you can actually get four elements in the same round, depending on luck. Ice body as well is a very powerful self buff, because of the immunity to critical hits and ability damage. Now as far now as far as the build for your dog pet, please remember to check my pet guide where I cover everything you need to know about pets, including a build for your dog. 
Alright, so let's now check our Shield Basher Demon Slayer damage. First, we douse the Trick Fate spell, so that's a lot less attacks we're getting for free. We are a ranger, so we can use Query at all of the enemies. As a free action, let's start with that before attacking. Now let's charge the Gallus Storm Caller with the aid of Pounce. Pretty fast, right? <laughs> Look at all the stacks of damage we're getting. Though our scimitar can actually deal more than 400 damage on a critical hit. As for our shield, something like 90 damage just from the base attack, because all of these other stacks such as Holy here, <laughs> more Holy, Divine from Elemental Barrage, Cold and more Divine from Elemental Barrage are also added to our main attack. So you're certainly dealing more than 200 damage on a normal shield bash attack. Now let's try it with the Trick Fate spell so we can really get our infinite attack loop going. So let's just charge at the Mythic Baylor. Everything just explodes here. Let's see how our damage actually went against the Baylor. So we charge at the Baylor, we get a critical hit for 422 damage. We immediately attack with our heavy shield because of bashing finish. And because everything is a critical hit, we just keep looping our shield attack, so... Our first shield attack here, notice that this attack isn't numbered, because it is a free attack. As opposed to our scimitar who says 1 out of 10. We get another shield bash, another, one more, and it just keeps going until the Baylor is actually dead, because it does apply to the same target only. The same for the Mary Leaf here. We first hit with our scimitar, which is a critical hit, we get a free shoot attack, another free shoot attack, yet another, and it just keeps going until the enemy is dead again. So if you want a build that has an infinite amount of attacks, be sure to go with a shield basher trickster. And you know, even before we get the trick fate spell, this is still pretty powerful because we have extreme critical range of our scimitar. Around half our attacks will be critical hits. And whenever we critical with a scimitar, we get a free shield attack too. Certainly makes for a very fun gameplay experience. And bashing finish is gained at level 10, so there's plenty of game left for you to experience. Well, so this was it for my shield bashing guide, everyone. It can certainly make for a very fun build, even if you don't care for the infinite looping attacks. You still have a massive amount of free attacks per round because of our extreme critical range. And our teamwork feeds too. If you found this guide useful, then please remember to like, subscribe, and even become a member to access some very neat and exclusive perks. I actually want to thank you all one more time before ending this video. As you might have noticed, I have a new mic now, which would not have been possible without all of your support. So thanks, friends, and see you next time.